All right, guys, so here we go. Uh, what we're going to be getting into here for our big finale is to work on designing a book jacket. Now, if you go to the store and you pick up a new book, most likely it's going to have some kind of cover or potentially a jacket over top of it, a piece of paper that's been printed and folded around the actual uh, physical book itself. So that's what we're designing. Now, think about the aspects that go into a book design. Okay, You're going to have to think about what kind of illustration you want. Do you want to make something in Photoshop? Do you want to make something in Illustrator? Do you want to take it all together and we're going to comprise the entire image, glue everything together in Adobe Illustrator? So when everything is said and done, you'll be using Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, proving that you've learned all of these different pieces of software along the way to make one professional finished piece. Now. As we're going along, I want you to think about the elements that go into a actual uh, book cover, right? So we have the front page of the book cover, right? We have the little sides. These are the flaps that are going to get folded in on the inside of the actual document and kind of be the thing that holds the jacket on. And then, of course, you have the back side, a little barcode, and the spine of the book. Now, depending on the size of the book, uh, the spine size will differentiate. So take all those different pieces together and also think about uh, the bleed as well. We've talked about bleed before in the class, but that little tiny edge that potentially could get cut off, you want to make sure that you have your the elements of your picture going right to those edge uh, if you want those edges to, uh, to bleed off of the paper. So for example, in this example that you see here, this orange kind of colored background, we want that to get totally sliced off. We want that to bleed to the edge so that orange is taken up and over the bleed zone. Um, if uh, you have text, always make sure that it is in, has a little bit of a margin, has an in from that bleed, otherwise it might get sliced clean off. So you always want to make sure you have some margins on your text as you go along, because you're never 100% sure how the printer is actually going to be uh, creating this uh, book. Now, other last little bits to think about. Um, you want to leave those margins in. You want to leave in a slight area for uh, folding the paper as well. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, you also want to think about what format we're in. So even though if you're in Photoshop, if you're in Illustrator, uh, if you're making something on the computer screen, we normally work in RGB mode. For this project, because it's something that potentially would get printed, we're going to make sure that we're switching over to CMYK mode. So CMYK is for print and RGB is for digital, like looking at it on your screen. Um, as far as how many pages, as far as how big the spine is, you want to think about how many pages your book is. So there are websites out there that will help you with this. Um, think about how each individual page is actually two pages. Each leaf of paper is two pages printed on the front and on the back. So if I had a document, that was going to be, uh, you know, 50 leaves of paper. So that's 100 pages of text front and back. If I had 50 pages, that means that we're looking at somewhere around a five to a five and a half millimeter um, thickness. Now we can do the math and everything on our own, or we can do it right in InDesign. But just understand, this is a uh, guideline. You're always welcome to kind of round up or round down, depending on how you feel. In the real world, you would actually print out a mock-up ahead of time and actually physically fold this around a book to make sure that everything lines up. You would never want the spine of the jacket to be folding around onto the cover or have something fold improperly. So all these measurements feel a little goofy. They feel like, why can't I just round and, and guess? And there's a reason you can't, because if you are a professional working in the graphic design field, you absolutely want to make sure that it is perfect to the nth degree. So let's go ahead and jump in. Uh, I'm going to assume for my document that uh, I am going to be working with 50 pages. I'm going to do a very small little document. Uh, for mine as well, I'm going to assume that I'm doing a 5 by 7 uh, book. Um, so it's not a big textbook or anything, something you would pick up in like a gift store, uh, a tiny little kind of easily thumb through uh, of, you know, paper. And uh, so that's what I'm going to decide for my book. Your book might be different. Uh, you are not locked into my measurements. So I'm going to go ahead and jump over into InDesign. Now, whenever we do File New, make sure that you are working in inches or pixels or whatever you prefer. I, I think in inches, so that's what I'm going to work in. Now, I know that my document itself, I know that the folder, or excuse me, the uh, booklet itself is 5 by 7. But... I also have to take into account that I have those little folds on the side, those little flaps, right? And these little flaps stick out on the front and on the back, and they fold around my document 
up on the inside and they kind of hold everything on. So with that in mind, I also want to take into account, okay, if it's a five by seven front, right, five by seven front, um, I want these folds to pop out. Now, normally uh, a big dust jacket like this, a big book jacket uh, might have a four inch flap. My book is not that big. It's it's five inches wide. Four inches for the flap would be half the size of the picture. So I'm just going to do about half of my cover. So if I have a five inch cover, I'm going to say that I want about a two and a half inch flap. So again, doing a little bit of math, two and a half on one side, two and a half on the other. That's plus five inches. So I come over my width. My width is now 10 inches. But wait, we're not done yet. So I've factored in my front flap, I've factored in my back flap, I have not factored in my spine. So now I, again I need to do a little bit of math and figure out exactly how big my spine is. So again this document here is telling me that uh, 50 page, 50 leaves of paper uh, equal about 5 millimeters in, uh, in scale there if for the spine. So again a little bit of math, 5 millimeters in inches and Google tells me Roop. All right, I got, oof, next to nothing. Uh, it is 0.19, we're gonna say 0.2 inches. So again, we're just gonna come over into our InDesign. So it's 10.2 inches. Okay, so now I've factored in my spine. Um, and finally, finally, whenever you're thinking about all these different elements, you may wanna add in a little bit of buffer room, um, just factoring in the fact that this is going to physically fold around. So this edge, the front, and this edge, the back, might physically fold in and around the document. So that might be something, depending on the thickness of your book, that you want to take into account. So there's that. We only have one single page. Now remember that InDesign is used primarily for multiple page documents. If you're making the entire book, we're just doing the cover. So we just want one single page. Uh, we're going to start on number one, because we've only got one. And the orientation is, of course, landscape. It is longer wide than it is tall. Uh, I don't need any columns or anything like that. Now, coming down my margins, um, for me, for a booklet of this size, uh, I'm going to do maybe like a quarter inch margin. You can do a half inch or anything like that. That's that's totally fine. And then finally, the bleed. We talked about the bleed before. I want to have a little bit of a bleed as well to make sure that um, my ink, uh, whenever it goes to get printed, um, runs off the page so that it gets cut and looks very professional. So I'm going to have a little bit of a bleed, a little bit of a margin. I'm liking it. I'm happy. I'm going to hit create. Okay, so here's my overall document. You can see I've got a half inch bleed, or excuse me, a quarter inch bleed and a quarter inch margin as well. Uh, if those margins, if those uh, scales don't work for you, if you're unhappy with them, you can always go into your properties and adjust your, uh, your margins right here. So for example, I'm not too thrilled. I think the margin should actually be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to shrink it down, uh, and uh, there we go, looking a little bit nicer like that. So I can also adjust uh, my bleed and everything else, uh, all the other aspects of my picture. So, so far so good, looking pretty nice. Now the next step is to sit down. I'm going to use my guides by clicking in my ruler. If you don't have your ruler, it's just Command-R, Command-R. So I can click and drag out all of my information. So remember that we're going to start here uh, our document overall is 10.2, so that's the width, right? So uh, I need to do a little bit of math again in my brain here real quick. So we said that it was two and a half inches for that first flap. So we're gonna come on over here, let's do zero, one inch, see how it pops up next to my mouse? Two inches right there, and then two and a half, right there looking good, done, okay? Next, we're going to come in, and I know that the uh, the next half of my document is going to be uh, five inches. So we're going to do that math as well. So I know I'm going to come in five inches from two and a half. So two and a half plus five, we've got seven and a half. Drag it on over, seven and a half, just like so. Now you can already tell, didn't do something right. So here's the thing. If that happens, if your math isn't working out, what ended up happening was I gave five inches for the front cover. I never added in five inches for the back cover. Ugh, what was I thinking? But again, don't stress it. I can come over here. I'm in the document. Click on my properties. Just adjust the width right here. There are always going to be things that go wrong in a document. There's always going to be things that go awry, but you can change and edit everything. There's no reason to ever get stressed. So I'm going to come on over just like so. Factor in another five inches. 
And look, my width expands just like so. It's easy. It's really, really easy. Okay. So now I'm at seven and a half. I need to add in, uh, what do we say? 0 0.2, 0 0.2 inches. Oh, so tiny. So let's go ahead and factor that in real quick. Again, just drag it out. Let's see. So we're at seven and a half. So 0 0.2 would be 7.7. .7. Okay, drag it out. 7.6, 7 7.7, 7. that's all the thicker my spine is gonna be. Now I'm at 7.7 .7 inches, I need to add in another four inch, or excuse me, another five inches for the width of my, uh, my front cover, right? So 7.7 .7 plus five gives us 12.7. Uh, so again, grab a ruler, or a guide, excuse me, come on over to 12 point, 0.7, dial it in, there we go, just like so. Now if the math is all correct, this little extra bit right here should be about uh, two and a half inches. So there's our 12.7 and 12.7 plus two and a half should take us to 15.2, look at that, 15.2, Ooh. now that is looking pretty good. Now other things that you may want to add to your overall document, so for me, I know that our width here is seven inches. Well, seven divided by two is 3.5. I really like to know where the middle of my document is. Some people don't. Uh, me personally, I always like to know where the middle is just so I can kind of gauge the height of the, uh, of the picture. Whenever you're working virtually, it's kind of hard to remember where everything goes. So I'm just gonna grab a ruler here. I'm gonna toss it in at three and a half. And that just helps me see kind of the middle of my overall document. Again, you may not need to do that. Um, if you want as well, maybe you want to add in a little bit of a guide, uh, a little bit of a margin on everything, right? So for example, if I know right now as it stands, my margins here, I have 0 0.125 for my margin, okay? Well, what if I had 0 0.125 margins everywhere, right? So let's find out. So here's my little inside flap. Grab a ruler, kind of drag it out. So currently this flap is at two and a half. Two and a half minus 0 0.21. So zero and a half minus the width of my margin takes me to uh, 2.375. So 2.3, and we can assume 0.37. Yeah, that's probably close enough. Um, remember that worst case scenario, you can always grab these things and remove them around if you needed to, if you weren't happy with it, 3.75. There you go, a little more articulate. Uh, I can do the same thing over on the other side, right? So if I've got two and a half and I want to add 0 0.125 uh, to my two and a half, that gives me uh, 2.625. So drag it out, 2.625. Now I know this all seems time consuming and silly. But here's the thing, now inside my document, right in there, that's the space that I have to work with on my flap, right? I can put all my text and everything inside of that area. Um, the back cover here, I know I can click and drag, whoops, I can click and drag, and I know that everything inside this portion is safe and ready to go, okay? I know it sounds a little silly, I know it seems like a lot of time, but I would suggest doing this across the board for everything. Give everything its own margin. It's really gonna help you out understanding and seeing very clearly how to work uh, within a document that has margins. Once you have this set up, you'll have your document ready to go. This is your template for your book cover. Uh, frankly, save it so that in the future, whenever you get hired to do a book cover, you've already got the template made and ready to go. It makes things really easy. Once you have this, let's go ahead and jump on into the actual design process.